So for those that haven't seen the original video, just check the link in the description below. You need to watch that before watching this because it explains what I'm doing. But let's take a quick look at what I did look like before. <laughs> Bloated and loggy right now. Not looking too impressive by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> yep, that was legit. That was exactly how I looked after minimal training and overeating. So welcome to the start of the seven day transformation. This is gonna be a seven day cycle. It's gonna involve some macro counting, some depletion phases, a loading phase, tweaking and peaking the body, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna go about doing that. And also what I'll do is give you guys a average kind of level of macros to follow to be able to do this alongside. So a generic way, because what I do is gonna be linked towards me and what I know my body works to and what I've used in the past. Make sense? Cool, let's go. That we need to cover what macros are just very briefly. We can talk about this for hours on end, but I'm just gonna cover it quickly for those that don't know. Macros is not a diet. It's short term for macronutrients. Your macronutrients are your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Manipulating these three things is what can manipulate your body fat to lean mass ratio. Micronutrients, things like your vitamins and all that jazz, in comparison to the macronutrients, have very little effect on your body composition. So, focusing on macros means we control the proteins, the carbs, and the fats towards our goal set. Now, what I'm gonna do is gonna be a little extreme. This is gonna be more like a peaking thing, but it's just to emphasize what you can do with the body and how you can manipulate it in a short period of time with diet and training. Now, granted, this result is not going to be sustainable, but what it does do is pull my body back in line. So what I achieve in terms of getting rid of water retention, getting my diet back on track by counting the macros properly and getting my body back into a consistent routine, that will stick with me. But these are all gonna be tricks you can use for the stage as well. So how do we count macros? We set ourselves a goal based on our lifestyle, age, height, lean body mass, that's kind of your, your muscle, skeletal muscle, um, organs, blood and all that. Put that alongside your activities, your lifestyle and all that kind of jazz. And then we come up with some numbers which suit your goal. Obviously in this one, we're focusing on deficit and depletion. Now throughout this, you're gonna be able to follow me on MyFitnessPal, the link is in the description. Make sure you download that app and then you can follow me on there. You can see exactly what I eat day to day. It'll be completely logged by the time I go to bed each day. I can't guarantee that the meals are all gonna be exactly perfectly laid out as they're taken. What I'll do often is eat a couple of meals, remember what I've eaten, maybe I'll be out and about and then I'll come back and log it all in one go. You'll be able to see my target that I hit each day in terms of protein, carbon, fat. So you're able to see exactly what I've eaten and the numbers that they generated by the end of the day. Sounds complicated, but really it isn't. You can even barcode scan foods now and it automatically brings them up and then you just log how much of it you've eaten. Super easy. Instead of putting your plate on just the kitchen side, you put your plate on a weighing scale and as you put the food on, you just log the amount. It's that simple. Weigh everything cooked if it needs cooking or if you're eating it raw, weigh it raw, obviously. Sense, use, common, sense. It's in there, we've all got it, I believe in you. So let's get down to the actual numbers and the way I'm gonna do things. So my normal macros for a day would be around about 200 protein, 350 carbs, and around about 65, 70 fat. So I have a seven day block to work with. So the macros for day one, 200 protein, 250 carbs, and 60 fats, totaling at 2,340 calories. So day one, we are gonna go what would initially be called a pullback day. So if I was to overeat normally, this would be a day I'd do afterwards. It's underneath my maintenance, but it's not anything crazy and it's still quite a good day of eating. Now, this isn't just calorie counting because a calorie is not a calorie. You need to understand that. Calories from fat, derived from fat, are not created in the same way calories derived from carbohydrates or protein, nor do those food sources react the same way within the body. So a calorie is not a calorie. Anybody that tells you that, flick them in the dick. What if they're a woman, Lex? Flip them in the nip. Day two. Now, this is where things are gonna get nasty. Normally we'd do three day deplete, two day load. But because I've been overloading for such a long period of time, I thought, let's just kick this into gear. We'll do a four day deplete because normally this protocol will be utilized alongside an already well-controlled diet. And then the three day depletion would really take effect because you'd had such control prior. I hadn't had that control. I've had three or four days of eating loads of crap. So my body's fully overloaded. So I'm putting in an extra day there just to make sure that when I kick into that three day point, it really does get the effectiveness of that depletion timeline. So day two macros are going to be 210 protein. So a little spike in the protein, 150 carbs. That's the same as like what Laney eats, a five foot, 208 pound woman <laughs> and 55 fat so a little pull on the fat but not huge so that totals out at 1835 calories we're going to run that for four days you need fats to stay functional you need fats for hormone support you also need fats to help you stop being a grumpy git if you cut carbs and fats 
you're basically taking the batteries out of the toy. It ain't gonna run. What we're doing here is glycogen depletion. So carbs, we're gonna manipulate carbs more than anything. So if you want to do this, some targets that you can hit for yourself. So start day one, I want you to hit 180 protein, 220 carbs and 55 fat. Moving to day two, 180 protein, 200 carbs and 50 fat. Day three, I want you to come in and join me. 200 protein, then you're gonna drop your carbs to 150 or if you feel you can do 125 and you're gonna bring your fats to 50. That's what I want you to do up through this depletion phase. The loading phase, what you're gonna do I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, listen to me here. Training. Your training through a diet does not need to change from your training during a game. There is no high rep, high volume, burns more fat. It's a b -b 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 bullshit. Your energy levels will drop a little bit in a deficit. I mean, they're going to, but your deficit should be balanced so that you reduce the amount of energy loss and tiredness that you feel. The idea when you're dieting, as a general rule, not for what we're doing here, is to support the body as much as possible while still allowing it to lose weight. That means eating as much food as possible while still dropping weight. So the only thing that's going to change in my training is I'm going to start adding in some helicardio just through the depletion phase to help drive out that glycogen, help deplete the body down, and also help control that kind of water retention and things like that. Also, I'm gonna keep my water nice and high. So I'm looking at least two to three liters per day, consistent drinking of water, very, very important. The cardio is gonna be mainly hit training through boxing. So it's gonna be bag work, pushing the pace. You gotta push the pace. When you're on the bag and things like that, it's down to you. So obviously you're not running at a certain speed or moving at a certain speed. You've got to constantly stay active. So it's down to you. It's a mental challenge for me, but also I enjoy the boxing side of things. And also obviously later this year, I want to be able to do a boxing match. So I want to always be keeping in line my cardio things alongside my weightlifting that has relevance to what I want to do in life. You know, don't think that you have to go on a treadmill and trudge away for 40 minutes at a time. It has its place when you need it, but try and make your cardio something more sporty, something that fits in line with the rest of your lifestyle. So I'm gonna look to do around about 30 minutes of HIIT training each of the days from day three. Why from day three? Because day one and day two, I want to see how the body reacts just with the diet itself, and that's gonna let me judge how hard I need to push the cardio. A good idea for anything is to do some HIIT training of around about 20 to 30 minutes. 30 minutes for the boxing, because I'm gonna have um, longer active periods and um, more substantial rest periods. Whereas if I'm gonna do things like sprints, which I'll also be doing, um, that's gonna be maybe even 15 minutes on that. With the sprints, it's gonna be constantly active. So you sprint out, drive out as hard as you can, then you jog back, turn and sprint. So there's no real stop and rest points like with the boxing. So again, that time that you overall have to achieve to create the same result reduces because you're constantly active through the whole time. <laughs> Sat that crap yesterday, last night. Whatever, let's weigh in. Yep. 180.6, that's the starting point. <sighs> Remember, sleeping like crap can often affect your weight. So if you sleep like crap, and then you wake up, when your weight's gone up, don't worry about it. <sighs> So 180.6, we're going to take that as a starting point. So we're water logged 180. I reckon I'm going to come down to about maybe even 175 if we get like a in, through the major depletion point. But peaked probably about 177. We're only talking like a three and a half pound difference here. That's going to create such a different look. And that's the whole point of this is to show you guys that you can do some, some fun shit with the body. And you can do it whilst not eating chicken and broccoli. <laughs> and turkey. <laughs> So update on day one morning physique. You can see super flat, super fluffy. So as I said, I'll show you two meals per video. So let's go take a look at the morning breakfast rituals. Good morning. Let me just show you guys something. There's the bobster making a what? An oat mocha. I'm gonna change the microphone on this, hang on. Because not enough people notice you when you're carrying just the camera with a tripod on it. What you also need is a furry penis on the top. <laughs> oh yes, furry penis. Now we're proper YouTubers.
That's so pretty. It's almost as pretty as you. <laughs> what I wanted to show you was, look, there's no rain. Hell, at this rate, I might even be able to put on a t-shirt. Okay, let's talk about this breakfast. And this is something I go to on a constant basis regardless because it makes me feel good, I enjoy it. It's low impact kind of um, in terms of carbs and fats and stuff like that, but it's high impact in terms of micronutrients. So you can pair this alongside a lot of other things. I tend to pair it alongside Kvark. Apparently this Swedish, I think it's Swedish, and they are 17 grams of protein per portion, 0.3 fat and five carbs. Five carb, 17 protein, bugger all fat, perfecto. 100 grams of strawberries, 75 grams raspberries, but only 50 grams of the blueberries because they look like blue balls. Get it? Prepackaged pineapple, they call these pineapple lollies, but these are pretty good. Why is prepackaged good? One, for pineapples they last bloody longer, but two, they're pretty solid on the portion size on those, so you don't really need to weigh them if you're in a rush, you can just take them and go. Once you've logged it once, if it's pre-cut and done, you can just kind of like throw it in there and not worry too much. Things like making a brew. If you're British, you need your brews. You also need this mug. So when you're making your tea and you have your little bit of milk in it, weigh the first couple of times you do it, then take the average. But if you were to not measure that milk that you're putting in your brews and you just count it as being nothing, then that over time, if you're like me and having three or four brews a day, then you're adding in 100 mil, 120 mil of milk that you're not accounting for. That's extra carbs, extra fats. You need to be in control of those little things. Plus, you still want to make your life nice and easy, so wait a couple of times, take the average, and just get used to that little glug paw. Glug paw. Glug paw. You gotta, you gotta kick. You gotta get that hip. You gotta, mm, mm, and then a little bit of, there you have it this is going to be my standard breakfast throughout the entirety of this the only thing that might change is the levels fruit is one of the lowest impact things you're talking about five to seven grams of carbohydrate per hundred grams of serving rhubarb and things like that not only rhubarb is a fruit but rhubarb 0.8 grams of fat per hundred grams which means boom this is a compote made from just basically reduced down rhubarb and blackberries and it is so low impact it's a solo don't even really need to log it. Woo! So, hit targets today. Protein aiming for 200, carbs aiming for 250, and fats aiming for around about 60 grams. And one of my final little niddly diddly doodles, 20 grams of Terry's chocolate orange Easter egg. Booyah. Just in case you didn't believe that I was gonna eat it. Mmm. Mmm. How's your chicken and broccoli, bros? So first depletion day almost down and done. And as I said, I'm gonna show you a couple of meals in each video. So there's gonna be four videos. So by the time you get to the third video, I'll have two meals per video. So you'll have six meal ideas to go through. And this one, which I'm gonna show you now, it's a low carb choice. So this is one about being clever and utilizing certain things to help you get more food for less macros. And that's where clever shopping comes into play. So I had the Joseph's Pitters. These are very low in carbohydrate. They also do wraps and other sorts of things in there. Then we had the chicken breast with protein cheese all wrapped in on top. 
all done pretty much man style, just whacked into the microwave. Chicken was pre-prepped, so 100 grams of chicken in the microwave, 40 grams of the protein cheese on the pitta wrap, let it melt down, wrapped it up, then put it on the toaster. Finally found out what those two little weird things on the toaster are for. These things, pop your pitta on there, toast it off, makes it almost a little bit like a little bit of a tortilla. Lovely. Very popular today. And the point of these things is when you hit this deficit, it's not to starve yourself, it's to be clever with your food. It's to get a little bit smarter with your food. Get a little bit smarter with your food choices and where you buy from. Now, predominantly we're in the UK, we use a company called Muscle Food. Use the code LEX5 to get 5% off of any order that you might like. Oh, the link's in the description. Well, thank you. But if you're in somewhere like America or anywhere like that, there's crazy things always available to you. Just do some research on the net, find some alternatives. That's what all this journey's about. It's about experimentation and finding things out. What you like, what you don't like, what you can budget for, what you can't budget for. Basics of it are though, you want to maximize your food. When you're in these low days, you want to find the food that gives you the most volume for the least amount of macros. So that's not to say if you were craving chocolate, you couldn't have chocolate. Personally, if I had a lot of fat left and I wanted chocolate, I'd have something like dark chocolate squares because it's high in cocoa, it's gonna satisfy that chocolatey need that you want, but also it's gonna bump up your fats, which you might have a lot to play with because predominantly in this nation now, we all live on a low fat diets and Really, we need more fats in our diet. So if we're all eating low fat food products, most people by the end of the day are probably massively under eating in their fats. So there's a little thing that you can play around with. If you're not gonna follow this challenge in total, what you can do is just eat a normal day. Have your normal days feeding, but just weigh the food as you eat it. And then by the end of the day, see what total macros you're generally eating each day. At least it'll give you a guide as to where you are. So in the next upcoming videos, what we're gonna cover is some more of the training, some more of the cardio in specifics, and also how I'm feeling and how I'm looking. So I'll keep logging in, I'll keep checking in. Thank you for all the support. I hope you're enjoying this funky little series. And let's see what kind of crazy seven day shreds we can create. All right!